everybody says we should vote and of course i get it we have the right to do that we should exercise that right but why don't people actually discuss the policies that are being proposed hmm? because they throw out a whole bunch of stuff and it sounds good but show me the money, okay? <laughs> so in this video, I am going to show you the money. We are gonna go over some major policy proposals from Trump and Biden and kind of really get into the numbers and see how feasible all of this stuff is. No matter what side you're on, or even if you don't vote at all, this information is going to be crucial. So be sure to stick around to the end. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of gems throughout the video. Keep it up for all that and more. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right, welcome, welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money, but for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. Please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell if you're about your money. We talk about everything from personal finance to investing to the economy. Let's get into it. Before we get started, it's very important to understand how the government gets their money. Literally, every single dollar comes from us. That's right, you and me, these corporations, all their money is through taxes, okay? So anything that we propose, whether it's get rid of all the student loan debt, give everybody a house, give everybody a car, it's gonna really go into one pocket and out of the other. So it's really important to understand, if we are not paying that money in taxes, they are borrowing the money from the Federal Reserve, which gets paid from, drum roll, our tax money, okay? So no matter which way you cut it, we are paying for every single thing that is being proposed and every single thing that actually has gone through. Also, very important, I know you've heard this before somewhere in life, okay? Actions over words, right? Actions speak louder than words. So while they can tell you they're gonna go put money here, put money there, let's take a look at the most recent financial statements to see where the money is actually really going. All right, let's take a trip down to my computer where we're gonna go over the 2019 financial statements from the US government. Now, this is the most recent audited financial statements. We won't get the 2021s until sometime later on this year. So let's take a look at what we spent our money on last fiscal year. As you can see, the majority of our money has gone to Department of Health and Human Services, which, let's be real, they're not going to cut that. If anything, it's going to dramatically increase because COVID, right? This COVID wasn't going on this fiscal year. Everything was nice. Everything was cool. So we're not cutting that money. Next, Social Security Administration at $1.1 trillion. Mind you, this is in trillions. So we have $1.3 trillion for health and services, um, and we have $1.1 trillion for Social Security. Can I show you guys Social Security right quick? Severely, severely underfunded. So another thing that if we do cut from this is we'll be taking away from the older Americans who cannot work. So in other places, it's kind of really tough to kind of cut. And now the third highest expense is the Department of Defense at $813 billion per year. They don't even wanna cut security guard funding, let alone defunding the police. So you know, <laughs> we're not defunding the military, okay? Military will continue to be very well funded. So we don't have a lot of room, right? Because if you see right after that, that's $813 billion. After that, it drops down dramatically to $364, or I'm sorry, $364 billion for the veterans. So if you keep on scrolling down, you know, you'll see what else we spend our money on. I will put this in the description if you are interested in kind of seeing where else money goes. But the top three are dramatically well funded and I don't see them actually making any cuts to this, okay? Another thing I want to show you all that's very interesting is our the revenue. The majority of it, 1.6 trillion comes from the individual, so you and I. And corporations, 322 billion dollars, okay? So out of all the revenue that the government gets, only 15% comes from the corporations and a dramatic amount comes from us. And I say that because a lot of people want us to tax corporations, but even before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, they seem to pay somewhere around, you know, anywhere from 11 to 15% of the total revenue comes from corporations. So they don't really give a lot. All right, so with that in mind, let's talk about these policies. I asked you all on Instagram, you know, what were your main concerns? And the main concern by a long shot was education as far as college affordability and student loan debt. So Biden has actually proposed $750 billion towards education. And just for some perspective, let's go back into my computer. Hold on, I wanna show you guys this. We did talk about the top three, but let's find education. It's right down here, okay? So $153 billion we spent on education. And Biden wants to put $750 billion into education. Well, if we see the actions, uh, the actions don't say 750 billion, honey. They, they say 153 billion, okay? So it might be a little bit of a stretch. And of course, that might be across a couple of years. So maybe he's thinking an extra 100 billion every single year. But even if it was across 10 years, right? 
That would be $75 billion every single year additional compared to the $153 billion that we paid for 2019. And education is only 20% of what we spend for military. So obviously we see where our priorities are. Do I think that they would spend the same amount of money they're spending for the military every year on education? I hate to say this, but no. I don't think that we value education more than we value our military in America. But in the unlikely event that we do see this kind of funding for education, here's what he is proposing. Biden wants the first two years of college to be free. Now, I personally am under the belief that we wouldn't have this tuition problem if the government didn't get in the way to begin with, right? Because I know, I know, we've heard older generations saying, you know, well, I paid for college myself with my job. Okay, we can't do that right now, okay? Because the federal government intervened and basically guaranteed student loans, right? So basically, when banks lend out this money for students, they are guaranteed to get that money back, all right? They don't really have losses because the government's going to guarantee it. And when I say the government, I mean us because we pay. Like I told you, the revenue from the government is only tax money and we pay the majority of the taxes. So we are basically guaranteeing all these student loans. So what does that mean? That basically allows these companies to keep on loaning out money because they're gonna get the money back. It also incentivizes universities to raise their tuition, right? Because, hey, if I know I'm guaranteed to get this money, why keep tuition at $1,000? Let's make it $10,000, $50,000. I'm going to get the money no matter what. That's how businesses work. I can't say I'm mad at them, but because the government is guaranteeing this, there's no limitations on the greed that these universities can kind of run away with. So that was a quick tangent, but basically he wants to give two free years of university. And if you're making less than $125,000 in your family, you don't have to pay for university at all. And I've mentioned this on my channel plenty of times, so if you're with me, I'm sorry, but the median income is $34,000. So we can actually be very fair to assume that most people would actually be eligible for this because most um, households don't make more than $35,000. He also wants to extend public education starting from three years old. So we'll have pre-K for the four-year-olds and pre-pre-K for the three-year-olds. We're still working out the name for that, but that's what they're expecting, okay? So kind of using the national average for childcare costs and putting that into perspective, it's around $16,000 per child. Now, do I think it will cost $16,000 per child to have three-year-olds in pre-pre-K? Maybe not, but no matter what the price is, we can expect billions of dollars needed for this funding as well. Now, as far as student loans go, Biden wants to simplify the student loan forgiveness program, which is definitely a whole bunch of hoops you have to jump through. Um, if you haven't watched this video on my channel, consider clicking up here. I talk about the student loan forgiveness program, but he wants to simplify that and basically say, Every year for five years, you can get $10,000 of forgiveness as opposed to having to do all this crazy math and fill out all these crazy forms. So that's like he wants to simplify things. But that is the extent of the student loan forgiveness. He hasn't really discussed any other options for people who are not in public services, right? So if you are a teacher, he wants to really make sure that the educators are getting looked out for. But other people like me as a CPA or lawyers, whatever, they're not getting these kind of student forgiveness programs. And most people might think, good, because you guys make enough money anyway, so you know makes sense now trump has actually been a little bit silent of course he has put student loans on hold which is great because i know a lot of people are struggling right now so it's nice that you don't have to make any student loan payments and you're not getting interest because of course interest is a killer so he has done that for us however he hasn't really said much of anything for student loans or for education we can only go off what he has done which has been putting more fun money into hbcus and extending the pell grant so he's come through as well now everybody's second favorite thing is taxes. And of course we all want tax cuts, right? Except Biden, he doesn't seem to want tax cuts for anybody, but let me get into that. Let's talk about Trump first. Trump wants to have the payroll taxes cut. He did have an executive order, which I talk about in this video up here, all the executive orders that he did pass. But one of those actually included temporarily suspending the payroll taxes, which if you don't know, that's basically your social security and your Medicare. It accounts for about 7% of taxes. So you can look at your own pay stub to actually get the information on that to see how much money you'll be getting back. But that's supposed to actually be starting this month. And he says if he is elected, he will continue that. So we will expect to see basically a 7% increase, which is a lot, right? Because most people only get 3% increases in their wages, if that. Some people don't even get any wage increases, right? So he's basically telling everybody, you're gonna get a 7% wage increase if you hire, if you elect me again, not hire me. <laughs> it does seem like hiring is a whole corporation, but at any rate. Now, like I said, Social Security is heavily underfunded. So is that the best idea? Maybe not if you're like 50 and you know, the next 10 years you will need that money. So I don't know. Now, what I do like about that is that it's actually going to the people because, you know, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act really benefited the corporations. I think his intentions were, you know, he's going to cut the corporate taxes and it's going to trickle down into the average person. 
and, and trickle it did. I'm still waiting for my little drop. Like, hello? <laughs> Where's my trickle down? I didn't get any money yet. So with him giving these payroll tax cuts, even though it's going to severely underfund some of our entitlement benefits, um, it does give everybody, the average American, a boost that we can actually really see. Because corporations didn't have to pass it on to their employees, and for the most part, they didn't. Now, Biden wants to tax literally every and anything he can get his hands on and anything with a pulse, okay? <laughs> he wants to raise corporate taxes again, and like I mentioned, I didn't really see a lot of effect from him cutting the corporate tax, Trump, but you better believe if he raises this corporate tax, I'm talking about Biden, if Biden raises this corporate tax, we'll definitely feel that. It was a trickle when they get the tax savings, but if they have to actually spend more money, I can imagine people getting laid the F off, okay? Because that's just how business works, right? So I think that if you were to raise taxes, it would be detrimental for the average American because they might have to cut more people's jobs, just try to make up for that difference. He also wants to eliminate step up basis, which I don't want to bore anybody, but if you, let's say your, your grandparent bought a house for $92,000, you know, back in the 90s, and now they have passed that land on to you, and it's now worth $920,000, okay? The way the law stands right now is basically they're going to step up your basis in the property. So even though she paid $92,000, they're going to say, okay, you basically paid $920,000. Biden's like, uh-uh, she paid 92, that means you paid 92. And what does that mean? That means when you go to sell the property, you're going to get taxed on that gain. So let's say you sold the property right when you got it passed on to you. At the current law, if you had $920,000 as a worth and you got the step up basis, you basically don't have any taxes to pay. But if you don't, if we have Biden's tra tax law, what's going to happen is all that gain from 92000 to 920000 you owe money on that, bruh. And that's obviously a bad day. <laughs> I, I, I don't agree. I'm trying to remain neutral, but baby, this, this ain't it. <laughs> he literally has so many different taxes he wants to implement. I did not want to crowd this video up just talking about taxes. If you want more information on that or anything else I don't mention, let me know in the comments and I can make a part two to this video. But what you must realize is that no matter what, we are going to pay for this, whether it is an in-your-face tax or if it's taxed through inflation. I explained this really well in my video up here, so feel free to check that out. So even if it's not an actual, okay, we're gonna take 10% of your income. It's instead, okay, well now your money's gonna be worth 10% less. You don't really feel it because it's not really in your face, but it's the same net effect. Like you're, no matter what, you got less money to work with. And speaking of money to work with, let's talk wages. Because of course it is a very big thing. And like I've told you guys to a point of nauseam, wages have not increased at really at all. I mean, we've gone from 30,000 to 34,000. That is nothing to be excited about at all, okay? I mean, it took two years to get that kind of gain, which is nothing. So what Biden is proposing is to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Now, while I do, of course, agree with that, why wouldn't you wanna make more money? I want everybody to make more money, okay? But what are the implications? You might price people out of the market that want the job but are not necessarily worth $15 an hour, right? Think about your high school students who just kind of want a job on the weekends to have some extra pocket change, or even a college student who just doesn't really wanna work a whole bunch so they still have to kind of take their own, you know, their work from school, but they want some extra cash on the side. Most corporations might not really be able to justify paying them $15 an hour, so now they're priced out. We're going to get replaced by, you know, automated tellers or automated, you know, cash registers where you, you kind of um, check out yourself at these supermarkets. So you really don't allow the younger population to kind of get into the job force. We've seen this. I mean, a little bit too much. It is expensive to hire people. OK, it's expensive as is because a lot of people, if you earn if you work for a certain amount of hours, you have to have benefits offered to you. So it's not even only the base salary, it's the payroll taxes they have to pay. It's the um, benefits they have to give you. So all these things kind of add up. So that might end up in the exact opposite happening. You might end up losing more jobs because now they're like, well, instead of paying this price of $15, we're gonna give you a $3 raise and make you do the work that they were doing. You know, They're gonna have to get creative because they're not gonna just keep on shelling out this money. This is how businesses work. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. If you have your own business, I'm sure you can attest to this. You wanna keep as much money as you can in your pocket. You don't wanna pay taxes. You don't wanna pay things that you don't really feel like you have to pay. So they're gonna try to find a way to circumvent this and I think it might end up in people not being able to get jobs because they're priced out. And Trump has actually been extremely silent on this also. Honestly, I was doing a lot of 
the research for this video and I could not find any one sheet of Trump's proposals. I mean, he's kind of just been like, yeah, I mean, I just want to win. We're going to figure that all the other details out later, okay? I mean, just get me his office. So it was been a little bit hard to find his positions on things, but you know, I did what I could do. <laughs> I just feel it's getting really long. So I'm going to end it here. If I did not cover something that you do want information on, drop it in the comments and I will do a part two. These are the most important topics that I saw on my Instagram that people were interested in. So let me know in the comments and I can't make another one for you. But that will do it. If you like this video, then please like this video and share it with your friends. It's very important because people want to vote, but you have to be informed. Don't make uninformed decisions ever, not just at the polls, okay? And if you have anything else going on, you know what to do. Go ahead and binge watch me. And until next time, keep your money up.